Hello, this is I Get Coach, he's the coach, he's thrown. Wayne in the weight class is episode three, part eight. Okay, I'm breaking my normal format um, because there's a couple of things I have to talk about this particular event, UFC 133, and events that's been like this over the past one or two years. Um, this event should be called UFC branding because that's exactly what this thing is. Usually I'll have a pictures or some videos, which I can't do because it's super copyright for the UFC, um, explaining fighters and their you know previous records. This time I'm not fucking doing that. Right now, um, with UFC 133, Rashad Evans versus John Jones, no scratch that. Rashad Evans versus Phil Davis, no scratch that. Rashad Evans versus Viola Machida Part 2, no scratch that. Rashad Evans versus T.D. Ortiz 2. <sighs> There are just not enough good fights to talk about. Um, I'm one thing I've, I've noticed is that there's four Facebook fights. One of them should be on the main card, which is Mike Brown versus Nam Fan. Um, for those who don't know Nam Fan, um, last fight was a very controversial loss to Garcia, who ended up losing to a twister to the Korean Zombie, uh, maybe one or two of minutes ago. There's so much fighting going on, I, I, I forgot. Um, I think that there, this is a give me fight for um, Mike Brown, not because Nam Fan's uh, a bad fighter, it's just because stylistically Nam Fan has always had trouble with opponents who are physically stronger than him. So when you're talking about the weight class which they're in, Mike Brown at 145 is probably the strongest fighter there is at that division. Um, then you have a couple of different fights that, on Spike with Matt Hamill versus some guy I've never fucking heard of before and I don't care to research. There is also um, Noguera, Little Noguera versus H, um, Rich Ace Franklin, which got scratched because Noguera got hurt. And like I said before, all the different substitutions of the main event of this card, a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's just too much fucking fighting going on. I mean, you have UFC Live, UFC The Ultimate Fighter, UFC Ultimate Fight Night, and then you have the regular pay-per-views such as this one. And I understand with them putting on uh, events, uh, not events, but certain fights on Facebook and Spike, and then also having the pay-per-view card, they're trying to really, you know, expand and, and get to, to as many different um, demographics as they possibly can, but fuck, man. It's really taking out the ultimate in the ultimate fighting championship when you, you can see fights all the time. And this, this particular event here really exposes the need for a bracket system in the UFC at this time. Um, ever since UFC, before UFC required pride and then, and then did a complete merger with the WC, they was able to have certain willy-nilly booking styles of, you know, who's the most marketable fights that you can possibly put on. But with this many fighters going on um, and no one knowing exactly where they stand in the UFC outside of probably Dana White and uh, uh, the Ferretta brothers, you need some sort of bracket system. So. So then fighters know exactly where they're at and where they need to be and what they need to do to move up in the ranks. You know, a lot of times you hear someone like Dana White say, oh, you know, if Kenny Foreman beats his next opponent, he has a title shot. What that ultimately ends up being is that it's either you're going to have someone fight a very conservative, boring fight style just to get the win, or they're going to get way too fucking nervous because they know if they lose, then they've lost their title shot. I think if you had a bracket system, it'll really make it clear as to um, as to who stands where, and also, like with Leona Machida declining to fight Rashad Evans for the second time, if Leona if Machida knew if he had if he was one fight away from having a title shot, he probably would have taken the fight. But if he just knows that oh he's going to take the fight to help out the UFC, and then not know where he stands in the title contention, then really what's the fucking point? He has too much to lose. So we, we have the events going on here. The only fight that may be a little bit interesting is Vitor Belfort versus Yoshio Akiyama in the hood. We call that nigga Schlick. Um, Akiyama has lost like his last two or three fights. And all of his fights, however, has, he's won the fight of the night bonus. So I think that's why he's still 
on the main card. And they're also trying to branch off to the markets in Korea because he's a, he's a full blood Korean uh, and Japan. His fighting style is going to make this a pretty exciting fight. However, he likes to stay in the pocket. Akiyama I'm talking about too much and that's just too dangerous for Vitor. Um, if Vitor at 185 has been pretty consistent, I know he got knocked out by Anderson Silva. We've all seen the highlight reel knockout. But I think Vitor, um, with the guy who wants to stand in the pocket, who can't kick like Akiyama cannot kick, um, is going to be a lot of trouble for him. If, he, if Akiyama can somehow get the you know clinch up, it may just prolong the inevitable where Akiyama might still lose, but it'd still be a very good fight. So uh, I see a Vitor Belfort getting this win. After that, um, there's a bunch of fighters I don't, I've never heard of, don't care about, and I don't care if someone is angry with me, a review of you of, of mixed martial arts, not knowing all these people's names. There's just too much fucking fighting going on. Let's get to the main event. Rashad Evans versus Tito Ortiz. Their last fight, which was a draw, um, was pretty much the equilibrium of their careers. Um, Rashad Evans going, you know, skyrocketing, knocking out Chuck Liddell in a very scary fashion, you know, beating, um, beating Forrest Griffin uh, for the UFC title, then losing to Lodo Machida, beating Rampage Jackson, beating um, Diego Alvarez. So he's been on the up and up ever since that fight. T. Ortiz, however, has not um, has not been so well. And after the loss to um, Rashad Evans, T. Ortiz fought Dilda Machida, and that's when he looked really fucking slow. He really looked his age. I don't see I don't see how T. Ortiz is going to win this fight. Um, Rashad Evans is I think he has a little bit too much submission defense, and T. Ortiz does not punch hard enough. Ryan Bader, I know, yeah, you know, oh, he, he was a good, he's a good fighter. Yeah, he's a great fighter. The problem is he's one-dimensional. He's just a wrestler who had um, pretty good matchups up until the John Jones fight. So I was still surprised that Tito Ortiz won the fight. I thought Ryan Bader was going to win. Tito Ortiz pulled it out, so I'm, I'm happy for him. Either way, I don't think I have, I don't think Ortiz is fully aware of what he's walking into. Um, I think it's be similar to the. Gilbert Melendez Tetsuo Kawajiri rematch that happened a, a, a few events ago in Strike Force. Uh, like I said, and, and like I said with the whole bracket thing, let me get back to this. You know, Dana White was talking about um, in an article. Oh, we know well. You know, he you know he beat Ryan Bader, and if he beats Rashad Evans, maybe he'll be entitled. He may be the number one contender. How the fuck is that? How in the hell can you sit here and say someone? who's beaten Ken Shamrock three times and won one fight since then, or I think maybe he, he won the, um, no, there was a Forrest Griffin fight before, um, before the Rashad Evans fight, so he won that by split decision. How the fuck can you justify him being the number one contender? If you had a bracket system, it wouldn't fucking happen. I, honestly, guys, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I understand this branding shit, but these events cost fifty to sixty dollars a pop, and there's two of them happening this month. So if you're a big, oh, I'm a big UFC fan, you just spent one hundred and twenty to a hundred dollars on these events for for really undercards that are shit, and for the most part free. There's four fucking four fucking fights that's on Facebook. Two fights were on Spike, and I don't know if the Spike is, is available in all throughout America. I'm not too sure about that. But if it is, you have over half the fucking car for free. So why are you paying 50 to 60 bucks to watch it for? Um, like I said, I, I know this is this is branding, but it, I think if this keeps up for like another year and the economy keeps shitty for another year, which it will, um, if we're gonna have fight fatigue. And I don't think these pay-per-view buyers are going to be as big. You're just going to see a lot of people watching fights in like places like Hooters and different sports bars because no one can keep up with all this bullshit. So, okay. Um, like I said, let me give a rundown for the people I picked. I picked Vitor Belfort. I picked Rashad Evans. I picked Mike Thomas Brown. And all the other fights I don't give a fuck about. I'm not watching them. I'm going to skip over them. Maybe I take a piss break. Maybe I take a pizza break. Maybe I go to work and then come back and then, you know, watch the main event. So, guys, uh, please check back with me a little bit later. I'm going to have a channel update. Take care.